it, it's been, been going well. You know, it's it's hard to play against each other all the time. You know, you get to this point in the in the, the workouts, and and our guys really uh, have a burning desire to play somebody different. Um, you know, we play each other in the fall. Uh, we play again in the early spring, uh, like we're doing now, and, and it's 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 a challenge. But the energy level has been good. Uh, we had a situation. Uh, you know, with inner squad scrimmages where we're trying to monitor pitch counts, we're trying to get guys their reps, but again, trying to get them into baseball shape. But the answer is it's been good. I've been positive, uh, but I think we're all wanting to play somebody different. Well, that's that's a great question. We we started a Grand Slam club, you know, four or five years ago, and it's been a big success. Every year we get more and more members that join our baseball fundraising group. Every year we get more and more input from that group. And, and one of the things in the feedback we got was, you know, maybe we might want to do some type of open house, some type of meet and greet event with our players and with our staff. And we've done things similar to that in the past, uh, but this year with, with putting the new synthetic infield in and, and doing some things a, a little bit different with our practice set up in the preseason, we felt like this was the time to do it. And, and again, we're going to open the gates at 1030. Uh, we're going to get our guys warmed up. We're going to go through our pregame routine, start a scrimmage at about noon and then play for you know two, two and a half hours and, and at 2.30 uh, allow you know fans, uh, boosters, anybody that wants to come down on the new playing surface to come down there and, and get a feel for what it's like, uh, interact with our players and our coaches, autographs, pictures, uh, just a really relaxed atmosphere to try to welcome our fan base, try to you know get them excited about the start of the season the following weekend and then trying to get everything done and finished so we can all get up to watch the men's basketball game at four o'clock and and again, trying trying to help the other sports here on campus as well. Well, it goes way back. I mean, you know, when we were first uh, first got here, all this that we're standing in now was all woods, and uh, just you know, the improvements over the years have been tremendous um, with the fundraising that we've been able to do, the the, the fundraising that our fa foundation office has been able to do, um, and this is just another piece of the puzzle. You know, we got more things that we need to do moving forward, uh, not only from a baseball standpoint, but as an athletic department, and excited about some of those things that are going to be happening. Um, it's part of what we have to do now. You know, it's so competitive in recruiting, it's so competitive uh, in baseball in this part of the country that we have to constantly look at ways to improve our program, facilities-wise, to try to keep up in recruiting. For our players, they've been excited, our fan base is excited. Uh, I get probably a text or email. Uh, every day, every other day, phone call, message from former players that maybe don't live in Charlotte that have seen the new surface on the on the internet, uh, pictures of it, and they're they're excited about it because they understand it, it. It helps us with recruiting. It helps us with player development. It does matter. Uh, you know, as we were talking about on the way up here today, you know, we had the second most teams in the top hundred in the RPI of any conference in the country. Uh, that's a big deal. You know, I think we need to get a few more in that top 25 in the RPI, top 30 in the RPI. You know, Rice has been a consistent uh, uh, team in that FAU was last year. And we need to get a few more, but, but to be the second most in the top 100 RPI speaks for the, the balance and the parity in the league. With that being said, you know, only eight teams go to the conference tournament. And the eighth seed won the tournament last year, FIU, and had multiple guys drafted off that team. So uh, it doesn't really matter if you finish one or eight. You've got, a, you've got a chance to be a regional team if you're in that top eight mix. So that's the, obviously a goal for us. Uh, as far as we're concerned, we're better. You know, uh, we improved last year as time went on. We're not where we want to be yet in terms of, uh, of you know, winning, winning the type of, of games that we've become used to with a non-conference and winning the type of games that we've become used to in conference play. But we're getting closer. Uh, still only have three seniors. Uh, have a lot of guys that have gotten a lot of experience. We've done a pretty good job recruiting here the last couple of recruiting classes, had a good signing class in the fall. So there's a lot of positive things that are happening. Uh, but we need to play better. You know, we need to play better than what we did last year. And our guys know that. They've been working hard. We've got a full year in the weight room, which I think has been positive for our guys. Coach Smith does a great job. And, and we're, we're excited to get going. We've got another challenging non-conference schedule like we, we play all the time. Uh, but I think that that will help us if, if we can uh, stay healthy and do some of the things that we've been doing well in practice. Well, we've, we've worked hard to, to, to try to get that to happen, you know, in terms of making some adjustments, uh, you know, with, with some team meetings and some, some other events that we've done 
And we've got a good group of kids. I mean, we got we got guys that, that are really concerned about you know making this baseball program in Charlotte baseball, uh, getting us back to the level that we were used to competing at. So all those things have been positive. Uh, the kids deserve the majority of the credit. We've kind of given them a framework, and we've done some things as coaches to try to help them uh, and try to teach them and educate them. Uh, and that's all well and good. You know, uh, hopefully that's going to continue as time goes on. I think that it will. Uh, it's just a matter of, uh, of us continuing to, to grind through the practices here the next week and a half, and, and then we get a chance to play William and Mary. Uh, we need to, need to lay it out there, play as hard as we can, then make adjustments as time goes on throughout the season. Again, that's another thing. We've been working on that relationship with, with Dan Rakowski and the, and the Knights ownership group and, and all their staff members for a long time. It's been many years that we've been working on that relationship and, and uh, you know, it's, it's helped us. You know, as time has gone on and they built BB&T Stadium downtown Charlotte, uh, that uh, working, so to speak, and that development of that relationship has helped us with, with being able to play. Uh, games downtown. They've got five total games that they're that they're going to host, and we're playing in three of the five. So uh, that's a great deal, great environment. Uh, we drew over 8,000 people last year. Uh, we've got Georgia in there early in the season this year. We've got NC State again back there, basically the same time frame as what we had last year. You know, the end of March, and then we're playing Winthrop. You know, there the early in April. So I think it kind of spreads that out a little bit. It's good. It's great for our fan base. Uh, people that you know maybe don't normally come to games here at Hayes Stadium get a chance to maybe go down there to BB&T and see us play, and it's it's a real positive for our program.